It was a warm evening in late spring when I came home early from work, hoping to surprise my wife, Laura, with a nice dinner. As I approached our cozy suburban home, I noticed a soft golden light spilling from the kitchen window, which painted a picture of domestic bliss. However, the moment I stepped inside, that illusion shattered. I quietly unlocked the door and entered the muted hallway, but the usual sounds of Laura bustling around in the kitchen were absent. Instead, I heard a hushed whisper seeping from the living room. A sense of curiosity, tinged with sudden unease, prompted me to tiptoe closer. My heart raced as I peeked around the corner and saw Laura. Her phone pressed to her ear, her expression a mix of frustration and guilt. She didn't notice me standing there. Her focus was entirely on the voice at the other end of the line. I can't meet tonight. My husband is home, she murmured, her voice cutting through the silence like a soft dagger. The room seemed to spin slightly as her words sank in, the realization hitting me like a blow to the gut. Yes, I know, but it's risky. We can't just... I barely processed the rest of her conversation. My heart shattered as the truth became clear. The woman I had shared my life with for nearly a decade, the woman I trusted more than anyone else, was leading a double life. A cold grip tightened around my chest, and retreating silently to the hallway, I leaned against the wall, struggling to comprehend the betrayal. Minutes passed, or maybe it was hours, as I wrestled with the surge of emotions swelling within me. Anger, hurt, disbelief, and a burning sense of betrayal coursed through me. When Laura finally ended the call and stepped into the hallway, her smile froze upon seeing my face. Mark, you're home early. I was just... Who are you talking to? I cut her off, my voice colder than I intended. A flicker of panic crossed her face before she masked it with confusion. It was just a friend from work. We were discussing a project, she replied, her tone defensive. Don't lie to me, Laura. My voice rose, a harsh edge slicing through the quiet of our home. I heard you. Laura's face crumbled as she took a step back, her eyes darting around as if searching for an escape. Mark, I can explain. No, I said firmly, stepping past her to grab my jacket from the rack. The sense of betrayal was too raw, too sharp, to allow room for her excuses. We'll talk about this when I can trust myself not to say something we'll both regret. With that, I left the house, my mind racing with plans. The initial shock was rapidly giving way to a calculated fury. She had deceived me, and for that, she would have to face the consequences. As I drove away, the evening sun dipped below the horizon, and I made a decision. I would ruin her life as she had ruined mine. Divorce, humiliation, whatever it took. I hadn't figured it all out yet, but I was done being the fool in her game. After driving aimlessly for what felt like hours, the sky darkened to a deep velvet, and I finally pulled in the parking lot of a dimly lit diner on the outskirts of town. The place was nearly empty, with a few scattered patrons lost in their own late-night worlds. I ordered a coffee, its bitter warmth offering a small comfort against the chill that had settled inside me. Hesitating for a moment, I pulled out my phone and saw the number of a private investigator. A business colleague had once recommended him. Taking a deep breath, I dialed. Mark Wallace, I introduced myself, my voice steady. I need your services. The investigator, a man named Tom Reynolds, agreed to meet the next morning. We'll get to the bottom of this, he assured me, his voice gruff yet oddly reassuring. That night, I spent a restless hour in a motel room, my mind racing with every possible outcome of the situation. The following morning, I met Tom at his office, a nondescript building nestled between a bookstore and a coffee shop. His office was stark and functional, lined with shelves of files that hinted at countless other stories of deceit. I need to know who he is, how long it's been going on, everything, I said, laying out photographs of Laura and details of her usual routines. Tom listened attentively, nodding occasionally and jotting down notes. We'll start with surveillance. Tap into her communications. Give me a few days, Tom promised, his demeanor professional and detached. 
The next few days were a blur of waiting and agonizing over every detail of my marriage. I kept my distance from home, staying at the motel, and my calls to Laura were short and perfunctory. Whenever she asked why I wasn't coming home, I simply replied that I was busy with work. Finally, Tom called. I have something you should see, he said, a weight in his voice. We met at his office again, where he laid out videos and transcripts like pieces of a jigsaw puzzle I wasn't sure I wanted to complete. There's a man who meets her twice a week, Tom began, pushing a photograph across the desk. It was a man I recognized, a mutual friend named Derek. My stomach turned. They've been careful, but we caught some conversations. It's clear this isn't just a friendship, listening to the recordings. Hearing Laura's laughter so carefree and intimate twisted the knife deeper. The details were damning. Their plans, their deception laid bare. What do you want to do? Tom asked after we finished, his eyes searching mine for a hint of my intentions. I want to confront them, both of them. Tonight, my voice was calm, but inside, a storm raged. As I drove home that evening, my hand steady on the wheel despite the turmoil inside, I prepared myself for the confrontation. Laura seemed surprised to see me when I walked through the door. Mark, you're home early, she said, a nervous smile playing on her lips. Not alone, I replied, stepping aside to reveal Tom, holding his camera. Her face went pale as her eyes darted between me and the equipment. What is this? Derek is on his way, I stated, watching as fear took hold in her expression. We're going to clear the air, all of us. When Derek arrived, his confusion quickly turned to shock upon seeing the setup. Mark, save it, I snapped, my patience fraying. The confrontation was fierce, with accusations flying as the truth was dragged into the light. Laura sobbed her apologies, mingling with Derek's clumsy attempts at justification. I listened, the recorder in my pocket capturing every word. When the storm of words finally subsided, I was left with a hollow victory. The betrayal had been confirmed, the wounds deep and raw. I want a divorce, I said finally, the words tasting like ash in my mouth. And I want both of you out of my life. Today Night. left and the house fell silent. I sat alone, the recordings playing back in my mind, the weight of my decisions settling around me like a heavy fog. The events that followed Laura and Derek's departure marked the beginning of my carefully planned revenge. The silence that enveloped the house felt heavier than any argument or confession. In the wake of their betrayal, I experienced a chilling emptiness, but also a fiery resolve that guided my next moves. I envisioned myself as a chess player poised to execute a checkmate. Morning light streamed indifferently into the kitchen, where we had shared countless breakfasts. Now I sat alone, surrounded by a chaotic spread of legal documents, divorce papers, and a more sinister assortment of evidence compiled by Tom. I picked up my phone and dialed my lawyer, Helen, a seasoned shark in the legal waters. It's Mark Wallace. We need to fast-track the divorce. I have substantial potential evidence of infidelity, I explained. Helen's response was brisk and businesslike. I'll prepare the paperwork, considering your evidence. We can push for an expedited process. Meet me this afternoon to go over everything. The meeting was a blur of signatures and legal jargon. Helen assured me that, given the damning nature of the evidence, the divorce could be finalized swiftly. She won't see a dime of your assets, she promised, her voice sharp and precise, reflecting the bitterness simmering in my chest. With the divorce set in motion, my thoughts turned to a more personal form of retribution. Derek had once been a friend, or so I thought. The betrayal from someone I trusted stung deeper than that from a stranger, and I found myself devising a special plan for him. I met with Tom again, this time with a different request. I want everything on Derek. Financial records, secrets, anything that can push him over the edge, I said, my tone cold and resolute. Tom raised an eyebrow, a flash of intrigue in his eyes. That's a darker path, Mark. Are you sure you want to walk it? I had never been more certain. Over the next few days, Tom delved into Derek's life, uncovering more than either of us had anticipated. 
Financial troubles, shady dealings, and skeletons in his closet that could cause serious damage if exposed. With each new revelation, my plan sharpened, taking on a darker hue. I reached out to a few key individuals who could play a role in Derek's downfall. A loan shark he owed money to, a business partner he had double-crossed. Anonymously, I sowed the seeds of discontent. Watching as the flames began to rise around him, the climax of my scheme unfolded one evening as I sat in my car across from Derek's house, concealed within a nondescript sedan that wouldn't draw attention. One by one, his angry creditors and betrayed partners began to arrive, their faces grim. I had tipped them off about his hidden assets and intercepted messages, igniting a confrontation that echoed into the night. When the police arrived, summoned by a neighbor, I knew my work was done. Derek's life, much like he had helped ruin mine, was spiraling beyond his control. As I drove away, a grim satisfaction settled over me. Not joy, but a sense of closure. The betrayal had cost me a wife and a friend, but they were paying dearly for their deception. However, the final act of my revenge was still to unfold. Laura was next, and I had already set my plans in motion for her downfall. The cold dawn was just breaking as I parked down the block from her new apartment, a modest place that seemed a far cry from the luxury of our former home. My heart raced, not with fear, but with an icy determination. Today would mark the end of this chapter in my life, sealed with a resolution that had brewed darkly over the past weeks. I adjusted the rearview mirror, not to check my appearance, but to confront the man I had become. Revenge had reshaped me, honing my edges into something sharp and dark. I nodded at my reflection, affirming my readiness for what was to come. The street was silent as I approached her building, the early hour ensuring few witnesses, which I preferred. By passing the main entrance, I headed to the back where I knew Laura parked her car, a car I had once paid for. I slipped gloves onto my hands, feeling their snug and cool embrace as I withdrew a small vial from my pocket. My research into her daily habits revealed her reliance on morning coffee, a vulnerability I was prepared to exploit. I had no intention of resorting to physical violence. My methods would be more insidious. The liquid in the vial was clear, odorless, nearly undetectable, and devastatingly effective. I approached her car, quickly unscrewing the gas cap, and within moments, the vial's contents disappeared into her fuel tank. This chemical would render her car inoperable within a few miles, a minor inconvenience yet the beginning of her unraveling. As I retreated from her car, my phone vibrated with a message from Tom, a final piece of the puzzle snapping into place. The video file contained evidence of Laura's deceit far deeper than I had known. It showed Laura not only with Derek, but also with my own brother, the ultimate betrayal. Rage coursed through me, pure and blinding, yet it clarified my next steps, crystallizing them into a single ruthless plan. She had attempted to turn my family and friends against me with lies and manipulation. Now they would know the truth. I forwarded the video to every contact she had tried to corrupt, friends and family members, with a simple note, see Laura for who she truly is. The digital bomb dropped silently, invisibly, spreading chaos into her life just as she had done to mine. As dawn broke fully, I drove to a cafe across from her workplace, watching as she emerged, confused and frantic. Her phone buzzed continuously, and when she tried to start her car, it stuttered and failed. Panic overtook her features, mirroring the chaos I had felt upon learning of her betrayal. Hours later, after ensuring her complete social and mechanical breakdown, I approached her as she sat defeated on a curb, her world crumbling. Laura, I said my voice calm, betraying none of the storm raging inside me. She looked up, her eyes wide with tears. Mark, please. There's nothing you can say. I interrupted, feeling a sense of power in my words. You've shown your true colors. I just wanted you to know I'm free of you, completely and utterly. Turning to leave, her sobs faded into a faint echo behind me. At my car, I paused to look back one last time. 
Laura was truly alone, her deceit returning to her a hundredfold. As I drove away, the weight of the past weeks began to lift. My revenge had been achieved, not through violence, but through revelation and strategic ruin. She had betrayed me, but in the end, she had betrayed herself the most. I was free, and that freedom provided the closure I needed. The final chapter of our story sealed not with reconciliation, but with a resolute and profound separation.